Let's imagine that you're trying to manage your blood sugar. Maybe you're insulin resistant. Maybe you're dealing with some blood sugar issues and it can be painful. It can be very annoying because you have some carbohydrates, you start feeling wonky, but worse off, you start feeling like every time you eat carbohydrates, you're just damaging yourself more and it starts creating problems in the way that you even think. What if creatine could actually improve insulin resistance, especially if you take it right with a meal? Let's talk about how this actually works and how you can kind of weave creatine in to improve insulin resistance because we're seeing cool research with it. If you eat a high carbohydrate meal, what's going to happen is your body is going to release insulin. That insulin is going to open up the cellular doorway so that those carbohydrates you just consumed can get into the cell. Now that's what happens in a normal functioning metabolism. With insulin resistance, it doesn't quite work the same. With insulin resistance, you are resistant to the insulin, right? So even if the pancreas is producing insulin, it's not doing a really good job at letting the glucose into the cell. There's a different layers of insulin resistance and there's different ways in which it impacts us. But at the end of the day, it's predominantly what we would call an inflammatory condition. It's the inflammation that's really causing the issue, not necessarily the carbohydrates. But what if you could get the cells to start using glucose? What if you could get the cells to actually take up the glucose and your body could start adjusting to using carbohydrates again? Well, that's where creatine comes in. We're starting to see some interesting evidence that creatine increases something called glute for translocation. What is GLUT4? GLUT4 is this little transporter and it lives inside of our cell and it comes to the surface of a cell and it soaks up glucose that's in the bloodstream and then brings it into the cell. This can work with insulin where insulin sort of triggers this to happen, but it can also work in other ways called insulin independent glucose uptake where simply moving your body and things like that can allow the glucose to come in. That's why going for a walk after a high carbohydrate meal is so important because it gets the muscles to actually mechanically bring in the glucose. And that GLUT4 is still translocating. It's still going to the edge of the cell and grabbing glucose, but it's doing it without insulin being necessary. So what does the research say about creatine? Because it can teach us how to use it and when to take it specifically. Before I get into that, I popped a link down below for something that you're going to want to check out. It's a company called Supco. It's an app and they vet out all kinds of supplements. So they look at so many different supplements and they determine like based on a different scoring system and all kinds of different purity testing and this and that. And they even do their own third party batch testing on a lot of things to see what supplements are legit, what are not, what are high quality, what kind of stack should you have. You could build a stack within the app. It is incredible. Subco just launched their pro version, which really lets serious supplement users design their own stack using tons of different data points. So using true data and true like information about these supplements and stuff that we have to really optimize what you should be taking. You can build a custom nutrient plan from scratch using all these different tools and data points. So it's like the most analytical, true, legit way to build your supplement stack. They don't have any intertwinement with brands. It's just about looking at what's the highest quality and allowing the user to use the supplements that they would get the most benefit from. They also help you optimize every single supplement within your stack in terms of when to take it, when the best time is, when you shouldn't take it, what you should combine it with. And right now, people that are watching my video can get 50% off the pro version of Supco. So I highly recommend you check it out. So that link is in the top of the description. It's sup.co slash Thomas. So check out their new pro version. So here's how creatine can help you. So there was a study that was published in the Journal of Physics physiology that found that creatine is actually increasing that GLUT4 translocation. So creatine is coming on board and it's encouraging that GLUT4 to come to the edge of the cell and bring the glucose in. This could be one of the ways that creatine is actually improving energy. So people have said for a long period of time that creatine works quite well when combined with a little bit of carbohydrates. We've heard that in the performance world. How does that work in the metabolic health world? Let's explain. In order to understand how it works in the metabolic health world, you kind of need to understand how it works in the sport world. So creatine does seem to work better with a little bit of carbohydrates. Part of it has to do with the hydration aspect. Okay, it allows more water to come into the cell, allowing for better hydration of the cell, allowing for better electrolytes within the cell. That's one of the benefits of creatine is the hydration aspect. But 
What we didn't really think about before was that this ability to allow glucose into the cell better could be one of the reasons why creatine works really well with carbohydrates. It's allowing those carbs to actually get into the cell better and be oxidized as energy, not just float around through the bloodstream doing diddly squat. But what does that do for you if you're dealing with insulin resistance? Well, it turns out that perhaps taking creatine alongside a higher carb meal could allow that GLUT4, again, that transporter to translocate, take some some of that glucose and put it where it needs to go. Now, is it going to change everything? Well, it might actually. Even a little bit of glucose that's able to actually get to the right spot then starts conditioning your cells and the cellular machinery to do better with those carbohydrates. We call this glucose tolerance. Now, this is tested all the time. We even in clinical settings will use what is called a glucose tolerance test to see how well do you quote unquote tolerate glucose? Do you tolerate carbohydrates well or does your body sort of reject them because of insulin resistance? or perhaps a myriad of other metabolic things. So if you improve even a tiny bit of your glucose tolerance, what happens is your body starts upregulating the systems and processes to use that glucose better once again. And it's sort of like compound interest. What do we mean by that? Well, small deposits of glucose being used properly then lead to more machinery, which then allows you to use a little more glucose better, which then creates more machinery, allows you to use more glucose better. Because remember, the most important thing for you to know about insulin resistance is that it is not the carbohydrates that are the problem. It is the inflammation that is the problem that makes carbohydrates not do what they're supposed to do inside the body. Now, how can you time the creatine? How can you use it properly? Well, there's a few different ways that I recommend using creatine. One is in larger boluses, larger doses. And we've seen in the literature now that you can take a 25 gram serving at a very safe degree. No side effects reported, even in a brand new 2024 study that looked at that. But that's not really what we're looking for in this particular case we're looking for more of a steady stream of it. So along with a carbohydrate rich meal, it might cause some GI distress to have 25 grams. You may want to lean into maybe just a five gram serving with a meal, but you still want to have maybe that creatine early in the morning in a larger dose. So in a fasted state, taking that creatine in is going to allow for the proper hydration. It's going to allow for even better ATP formation in the morning. It's going to allow for that brain energetic aspect that you want for neurotransmitter formation, all these benefits. One of the big studies we've seen is that if you're sleep deprived and you have a large 20, 25 gram dose of creatine, it can offset the negative effects of that. That's huge, huge, huge. But that's something you want to do in a fasted state first thing in the morning. We're talking quite a time specific thing here. If you looked at the news, there's a pro golfer named Ben Griffin. They said he overdosed on creatine. Can you actually overdose on creatine? Not really. But what happened was he took about 15 grams in one serving, and that's a lot for him. And what happened was he got really shaky, really trembly, kind of wonky. And they started figuring out that what happened with him was possibly a blood sugar destabilization because the creatine worked so well on an empty stomach. And then he did a long warm up that he wasn't normally used to doing. It actually caused his blood sugar to crash more than it normally would because it was doing such a potentially good job at bringing the glucose into the cell. We're learning that it has this ability to do this. And if you do it in a fasted state, you may find yourself getting a little bit low blood sugary. But is it something to actually stop you from using creatine? Probably not. It's just we're learning now through anecdote that creatine has these effects. What we noticed with Ben Griffin, we don't know for sure that this is what happened, but when he had some calories and some fuel come on board, everything stabilized, which really tends to make me think it was blood sugar related and he just wasn't adjusted to just these energetics, right? The cells is taking that glucose in. So his blood sugar dropped. We can find that, hey, if he had have had carbs with that, that wouldn't have happened. But those carbs would have gotten used properly and he would have just had directed energy where that energy came in and actually just made him feel like he could perform well rather than getting shaky and trembly. It looks like the right dose might be like a three to five gram dose along with a higher carbohydrate meal. Give it a shot. It's one of those things where the evidence is starting to point in the right direction and it's only going to help you metabolically either way. So as always, keep it locked in here my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.